In this video, we explain the thermodynamics of mixing two liquids. Uh, in the prior videos, we have explained how to write the chemical potentials under a variety of uh, conditions for a gas, for a liquid in an ideal solution, uh, for the components of an ideal dilute solution, and also for real solutions. And this is uh, what we've been working with. Now, all of these chemical potentials can be uh, 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 grouped together into just one expression, which we can use as a place holding for all of them. Okay, the chemical potential of a species is going to be equal to the chemical potential at, at reference, plus a correction from the fact that it's, uh, you, you might not be at the reference uh, uh, concentration, and this is just a measure of your concentration. All right, so what we're going to do uh, in this video and in the future uh, uh, next couple of videos, we're going to see how we apply these expressions to solve interesting problems in chemistry. Uh, the first one today is going to be the mixing of uh, two liquids in an ideal form. Okay, so we're going to have here uh, liquid A and liquid B. Okay, this is A and this is B, which I'm going to write with a different color. And then we're going to mix them to form uh, a solution. All right, so we mix these two liquids, and then you get uh, the that is your new solution. And our goal here is to try to calculate whether this mixing will be spontaneous. Okay. Another way to see this is to say, well, uh, suppose that we actually have here a container in which um, uh, these two liquids are separated by a wall, okay, like that, and then our goal is going to be just to remove the wall and see if uh, the mixing of these two liquids will be spontaneous or whether they prefer to stay separated. Okay? Obviously the answer is that yes, the mixing will be spontaneous, but of course what we can do is just see how uh, that is borne out by uh, our thermodynamics work. All right, so this is going to be an ideal solution which means that we're going to be in this case, okay, right here. All right, so uh, if we take our placeholder expression for an ideal solution, then the reference will be the pure substances, and then my activity can be replaced by uh, the mole, con uh, mole fraction of each of the components. All right, so for to calculate spontaneity, what we have to do is calculate the change in Gibbs energy in the process. We're doing this at constant temperature and pressure, so then uh, the change in Gibbs energy will be the predictor of spontaneity. Right, so before mixing, I'm going to call this uh, the initial Gibbs energy. The uh, uh, Gibbs energy of before mixing will be uh, the number of moles of liquid A that you have times the contribution per mole of A to the mixture. But that's what we call actually the chemical potential of A. Now notice that before mixing, okay, uh, uh, what I have in A is just pure A, not mixed. Right, so this chemical potential will be the chemical potential of A when pure. Right? Now I also have another component, which is B, and that is going to be the number of moles of B times the chemical potential of that component, B. Okay, yeah, but because it's also pure, then I will have that that will be the chemical potential of B when pure. Now after we have mixed them, this will be your my G final. I have that uh, this will be the uh, number of moles of A times the chemical potential of A plus the number of moles of B times the chemical potential of B. Now notice that in this case, these are no longer the chemical potentials when pure, because when you have the mixture, they're no longer pure. Okay, great. So the question is, well, what are these chemical potentials? Well, uh, that's actually what we have been doing the last uh, few videos, right? Try to figure out how to write those chemical potentials. And again, what we know is that for uh, an ideal solution, which is what we uh, are, the way that we create this uh, process, right? Uh, that is just going to be the chemical potential of A when pure plus RT natural log of the mole fraction of A. All right, and then for B, we'll have something similar. And B, chemical potential of B when pure, plus RT, natural log of the mole fraction of B. Great. All right, so uh, then what we actually do now is uh, take the difference between these two expressions to calculate what delta G would be. All right, so uh, if I subtract uh, initial minus final, then what I will get is that delta G is going to be equal to the following. Notice that I'm going to have here an Na chemical potential of A when pure, which is going to cancel out completely with that term. And then I'm going to have an Nb chemical potential of B when pure, which is going to cancel out with that term. So the only terms that survive are Na RT natural log of Xa and Nb RT natural log of Xb. Right, so I can write that as uh, Na RT natural log of Xa plus number of moles of B times RT natural log of XB. All right, uh, what else can we do with this? We can try to consolidate these terms a little bit by noticing um, 
that the number of moles of A, or the mole fraction of A, is equal to Na over the total number of moles. Okay, where that N would be the number of moles of A and the number of moles of B. Okay, so what I can do is say that N sub A is equal to N times the mole fraction of A. Okay, and what I'm going to do then is uh, replace this value for Na right here, and then the analogous, uh, the analogous one for uh, NB. Delta G, this is now of mixing, that's what we're trying to do here. The process is a mixing process. Okay, it's going to be equal to N, X sub A, RT, natural log of X sub A, plus N, X sub B, RT, natural log of X sub B. Okay, the reason that we have done this uh, manipulation here is because we can take one more common factor, which will be N, and then we can also take a common factor of RT, RT, and that is going to give us a very consolidated final expression. All right, so uh, the Gibbs energy of mixing uh, of an, uh, two liquids in an ideal uh, solution is going to be equal to N, RT, and then common factor of XA, natural log of XA, plus XB, natural log of XB. Okay, and that is our final expression here for the changing Gibbs energy. Okay, let me erase this. All right, great. So uh, now we can predict, this the process spontaneous or not? We're doing this at constant pressure and constant temperature, so the sign of delta G is going to tell us whether the process is spontaneous. Uh, if the sign is negative, then E will be spontaneous. If the sign is positive, it won't. And if the sign, uh, or if the uh, Gibbs energy of mixing is zero, then uh, this will be an equilibrium process. All right. So notice that when you mix, the question is whether, what is, whether we can predict the sign without doing any numerical work. Okay, notice that when you mix A and B, the mole fractions are going to be in between 0 and 1. If you make a 50-50 mixture, which is something that we have up there, right, that will be 0.5 and 0.5. Now we know the that the natural log of a number between 0 and 1 is always going to be negative, right? Because these numbers then uh, are always between 0 and 1, that means that this logarithm is going to be negative, that is going to be negative, that means that the whole parenthesis will be negative, and the whole expression will be negative. So under any conditions, as long as x sub a is different than 1 uh, and x sub b is different than 0, whenever you mix this uh, at any ratio, then you always get that the uh, Gibbs energy of mixing will be negative. This is something uh, that means that the process is spontaneous. This is something that you can anticipate. Certainly when you, uh, again, if you leave this wall, you never see that b stays in b and a stays with, uh, uh, in, you know, in that part of the container. Okay, when these liquids are similar, Okay, like benzene and tolium would be, the mixing is going to occur spontaneously. Okay, but again, notice that this is the first simple application of our chemical potentials, and it's a useful one. It's so one that should be illuminated. Now we can take this a little further to try to calculate here uh, what the entropy of mixing would be. Not the Gibbs energy, but the entropy. Now, uh, of course, we can relate uh, the entropy of mixing to the uh, Gibbs energy of mixing using our work with the Gibbs energy minus T delta S of mixing. Okay, so we already have this term, which is that one. And then the question is, well, can we uh, solve here for delta S? Yes, we can, uh, but then the question is, well, what is this delta H? Notice that that will be uh, the enthalpy term that uh, emerges from mixing the two liquids, right? So uh, if the process is exothermic, right? So if there are interactions that are very favorable between A and B, then uh, uh, this process will be exothermic and delta H, uh, H will be negative. However, if the interactions between, the, uh, between A and B are repulsive, uh, uh, then you're actually going to have to supply some energy uh, to be able to uh, uh, mix these two liquids, and this delta H will be positive. Now, remember that this is an ideal solution. And the condition for ideality in a solution is that the interactions of, of A with B are of the same strength as those of A with A and B with B. What that means is that when we mix uh, A with B, there's no change in the interactions because, again, A is interacting with B the same way that it's interacting with an A molecule. And what that means is that for an ideal solution, delta H of mixing is equal to zero. Okay? That is the condition for ideality. Now, then, uh, what we can then uh, do is try to solve here for delta S mix, which is going to be direct. You notice that that is going to be equal to minus uh, delta G of mixing over T. And then we have uh, that expression, right? So uh, we have that this is going to be, you have to divide this by, uh, uh, change the sign and then divide over T, so that is going to turn to be minus NR, uh, 
and then the parentheses. Xa, natural log of Xa, plus Xb, natural log of Xb. Right, so that will be the change in entropy when you mix this. And the question is, well, is this going to be positive or negative? Obviously, we should expect that uh, when you mix these two uh, liquids, uh, the entropy increases, the entropy of the system increases. And that's something that you can see right here. Okay, again, notice that uh, this number is always going to be negative, that number is always going to be negative at any uh, mixing ratio, that parenthesis will always be negative, and because you have a negative sign right here, then the change in entropy uh, uh, will always be positive, which is something that we anticipated. But again, this is a nice way to see how chemical potentials become useful after a few videos in which we spent uh, quite a bit of effort trying to derive what those expressions for the chemical potentials were.